Welcome to Loss Explains Projection. Chapter 1, the Formation of the Superego. Oh, look, a baby. What's that baby has? Uh-oh. No bombs, says Mommy. Oh, look, another baby. What's that baby has? Uh-oh, an assault rifle. No guns, says Mommy. Baby is very upset, and he does not like hearing no all the time. So Baby does what all of us do, and repurposes some of his consciousness into voices or creatures to help him avoid being told no. He just tells himself, and often these voices sound just like mommy or daddy. It's not just no's baby's trying to avoid. He also creates voices to help coach him on how to better harmonize with other members of society. And baby's parents stimulate this learning by offering baby praise when he achieves a good deed. As baby grows, his superego develops with greater and greater complexity, incorporating a menagerie of voices, all helping him avoid no and harmonize well with society. And baby's superego follows him into adulthood, residing in his subconscious. He doesn't think of it like a superego, he just thinks of it as who he is. And his superego interacts with the world, strangely and often with the same tone with which it interacts with him. This is our first example of projection. Chapter 2, Traditional Projection. In traditional psychology, projection is when a person displaces their own feelings onto another. Let's see how it works. So Brad's feeling angry in his underneath mind, but his superego won't let him feel it, probably because somewhere along the way, Brad was made to think that anger was bad. So what does he do? He displaces it onto Helen. Because the definition of projection is about the displacement of emotion, it's technically possible to say to someone that they're angry, be right, and not have any anger going on inside of ourselves. This would be called sensing. Both functions are still using the keen eyes of the superego. And so, right or wrong, both are using the same mechanism. And they're probably projecting. Chapter 3, Conscious Projection. Now that Brad knows that he's often and probably projecting, he can begin an inquiry any time he wants to tell someone how he thinks they're feeling. He can look for little cues. Does he have urgency to tell Helen that she's angry? As if she'd be in danger for being angry. This is a sign that Brad might feel like he's in danger when he's angry. And this can start deeper and deeper inquiries and promote Brad's own self-intimacy with his superego. Often, when people begin updating their superego, they combat the intensity of the voices they're already hearing with louder voices. These updates are necessary as they develop their ability to work with their superego. One drawback to this way is that the increasing 
intensities seem to spiral. When beginning to work with these voices, we often assume that because it's our mind or our consciousness, that we have the right or power to dominate them. And this often fails to promote positive change. For whatever reason, assuming that the mind can listen back to us either creates or reveals its inherent relationality. Four attitudes or affirmations that can facilitate this dialogue are, I don't know who you are, I don't know what you need, I want to know, and I'm sure you make sense. Chapter four, introjection and conscious introjection. Introjection is the unconscious adoption of the ideas or attitudes of others, much like our baby in chapter one. But it also can happen when someone projects on us. We hear their belief and just assume it's true. With conscious interjection, we can use the barking dog of the projectionist superego as our own bloodhound, trusting that if it is so good at hunting in them, it might be able to see things in us. We can use this to power inquiries that increase our self-intimacy and self-expression. One thing that can be tricky about borrowing the eyes of someone else's superego is that though they may be an expert at detecting a feeling, their tone may convey that they have negative attitudes about that feeling. Separating out the feeling from what's felt about it can be both powerful and difficult. Most of our defenses rise when we hear critical tones and self-inquiry can shut down when we don't feel safe. Thanks for watching guys. And if you want more, check out more videos, my coaching page, or if you really like this stuff, come see about circling.